In today's gospel passage, we heard about Jesus going to Jerusalem for the Feast of the Tabernacles. Now, what is the Feast of the Tabernacles? It is also called the Feast of the Booths or of the, of the Tents. Going back to Jewish history, this is what we see. There were three main important festivals for the Jews, and one of them was the Feast of the Tabernacles. And why did the Jews celebrate this feast, and how did they do it? Recalling to mind the Old Testament, the Exodus, we read that after Yahweh had delivered the Jews from slavery into Egypt, they had to travel a long distance to the promised land, to their land, homeland. And on the way, being a long distance, 40 days, for me more than that, they halted at different intervals where they built for themselves temporary shelters for the night. And these they called booths or tents or tabernacles. And when they settled for a short period at this time, they remembered how Yahweh had provided for them provisions for that night and for the following day. So this is the Feast of the Tabernacles, Feast of the Booths, celebrating the journey from Egypt to uh, back to the homeland. Being very important feasts, all the male Jews who were settled elsewhere will come for this feast. And there being no place in the inns, they will build for themselves temporary shelters called tabernacles or call them booths or call them um, tents. This is the Feast of Time. This is the background of the whole event, Christ going to the temple, being a Jew himself. Now what happens there baffles us. The Jews, the common people are in a dilemma to accept Jesus as the Messiah or not. The dilemma is this, they knew that this man was indeed a great prophet because whatever he said and did with authority, no one in the past of the prophets had done it. So the viral fever we'll call today was, he is the Messiah, surely. People thought that, but they had a big doubt. But they knew that he came from Nazareth, they knew who his parents, they knew who his so-called cousin, brothers and sisters. He says, we are lost. And the devil says, we know one thing, this is how he comes. But we also know one more thing, that when a Messiah comes, no one will know from where he comes. So, confusion in the mind. We know, and yet we don't know. So this man cannot, is or is not with the Messiah. So this is the thought in the minds of the people. And what does Jesus respond? He says, you know me where I come from, you know my parents, so call them, you know my cousins, but you don't know from where I come from. I come from my father. If you go to see in life, we also at times encounter such so-called deliriums or confusion, what do I do next? This is the life of Ignatius, he was in the same, same state of mind. To go back to his uh, kingdom, serve as a soldier for his king and gain fame. Or to serve the eternal king Christ himself, there was a delirium. What did he do? He let himself go in the hands of God. Let God decide what is the next step for him. And when he let himself go, let his spirit guide him, then he found the path God had chosen for him. He takes it and moves along. What do we do when you are in that delirium? Simple example. The, the first exams are getting over in a couple of days. Now what next? What next? A couple of days on the 1st of April, SSA exams begin. They end. What next? Parents want their son or daughter to be take this field. 
they say, no, that's failed. Confusion confounded. What do we do? Do you listen to the parents? They say, no, you have got a musical ear, or you got a scientific mind, you got a calculative mind, you got a business mind. Let's pray for today for all the students who will finish the exam tomorrow, the last paper. I mean, general one, a couple of days, there are other papers, vocational ones, and at CWS. They'll having a rest, but when the results come, and before they come, let them decide what they want. Let's not influence their minds. Surely, we have a right to tell them this is for a future. But let's not walk as in the past. My father is this, I become this. My mother is this, I be. If you tell you clearly, my example, being a headmaster for many years in schools, I will ask the teachers who come interview for a job, what do you want to become a teacher? My father is a teacher, my mother is a teacher, my sister is a teacher. So let's pray for all this uh, so-called, and of course these student teachers were immediately, you know what, knocked out. They had no vocation to be a teacher. So let's pray for all the students who are in the 12th or all those who are decide, uh, deciding to see what next for their future. That God's Spirit may guide them and they let themselves go in the hands of God so that God's Spirit helps them to, you know, to make the decisions whether in the business or whatever it is.